Ryan C. Sparky, 5 for 12.50 a.m. The Fan. How y'all doing? Another lesson with my guy Dick Wallace out here. He's like the Yoda of golf instructors. Like, if you think about it that way, the guy is unbelievable. Before we started, we were just having a conversation. I stopped. I said, why weren't we recording that? So now we're going to try and duplicate the conversation again as far as what we were just talking about. And what I had asked the great Dick Wallace is, let's talk about pitching. You know, the short game. We talked about driving the ball. We talked about fair way woods and all of that but we never really got into the short game when you're closer to the green and trying to make that great shot to get close to the pin and you had some uh, unbelievable wealth of knowledge as far as how this all came to be well when people ask about the short game I've always been a I, it was always amazing to me that when when they gave it a name when they started calling it pitching and chipping and it even extends to putting there's, they think there's a separate set of rules that go along with, right. with the name. So now you have to, in order to hit a pitch shot, you have to have a narrower stance, you have to have your body open in this. All it is is a variation of the full swing. So when you learn how to swing a golf club, it's no different than learning how to play catch with someone and tossing a ball back and forth. The closer you get to the person, the less you involve the body. Your instinct will tell you that if you'll just listen to your instinct. But if you put names on it, then it becomes more of a subject. And it becomes, and it's all, all it is is a variation. You swing it shorter, you swing it softer, you, the ball doesn't go as far, it goes higher because the pitch shots are hit with nine irons, wedges, they're more lofted. So the ball's automatically going to go higher and it's not going to go as far if you use a smaller version of your swing. Now you talk about pitching, what about putting? How dramatically different does that become? Now, because now again, for me personally, I, I'm not that good, right? That's why I got Dick Wallace here trying to help me. But, but the whole idea of putting, like we just did some mini golf or whatever the case, maybe when we were in the Dells with the family over the weekend, that's one thing. When you get out on a regular green and you have to quote, read the green, uh, whatever that is, read the green and be able to, you know, play it one way or the other, that's not exactly the same thing as teeing up a ball and hitting it. Well, there again, putting, if they would have called it ball rolling instead of putting, which is all it actually is, and there's not a person in the world that doesn't, couldn't learn how to roll a ball five feet. Right. If you just did it in your living room on the carpet yep. and then you moved it to 10 feet, you could learn to roll the ball 10 feet. As far as reading greens, and there again, it becomes not, well now it's an art, but if you stand on a, if you stand on a piece of land and the pitch is from right to left, you don't have to be a golfer to know that if you roll the ball on that surface, it's gonna curve toward right. the downhill. So there's not a lot to learn. It's just, you're, if you let your instinct, the more instinctive you can be in golf, from the driver to the pitch shots to the putting, the more instinctive and just listen to yourself, you'd be surprised at how fast you can learn it. But then again, when they call it different things and they talk about reading greens and all this other kind of thing, it becomes almost like, well, that's a regular subject in itself. So you think you have to spend a lot of time learning it. But what you said a little bit ago when you opened up this, this part of the discussion, you said, you're not that good. I would beg the difference. You weren't. <laughs> good. Okay, right. But now. Now the master. Now you're. Now, I'm, I'm much better now. Right? You're way better than you but used like, to be. But like you give golf lessons, you've given golf lessons forever, right? Yes. And my dad used to take golf lessons, and I've seen other people take golf lessons, and normally it's at a driving range or here at the Wisconsin Indoor Golf Center. That's what you should do with Dick Wallace. But even in that situation, I've never seen anybody, a golf instructor with somebody teaching them how to putt. Like mm -hmm. it's always up off a tee or pressing off the, the grass for iron shots. Do golf instructors show guys necessarily how to putt? Is that a thing or is that kind of you're on your own, figure it out? Well, I think it's a self-created thing. I mean, it, it, you could, because most all businesses are predicated that it's money driven. So if somebody thinks they have to be taught how to putt, then that opens the door for a lot of putting instruction. Now, depending upon how good someone wants to get, if somebody's trying to play the tour, it's a little bit different approach sure. than if somebody's just, just going out for enjoyment. Right. Because you, you don't need a lot of the information and whether or not they realize it, they already know how to do it. Yeah. It's just like swinging a golf club. 
people that have never been exposed to golf at all, when they come in, I tell them, look, you already know how to do this. You just don't know you know how to do it. Who can't swing an object? If you understand what the swing is and the things that we covered, right. it's just a swing and then you have to let your body respond to the motion. You can get a really, really good golf swing within the matter of a couple months. It takes you the rest of your life to figure out how to play golf because that's sure. a whole separate issue. Because it's all about choices. You got decisions on every shot. Should I go over here? Should I go over there? Should I lay up over here? It's not always just the yardage and that what club goes that far. You might not want to use that club. Mm -hmm. So that's the art of golf. That's where the real fun is, is learning how to play golf. The swing is simple. Right. I mean, you, and you got to give yourself a break and you got to let yourself learn it. Part of the learning is making mistakes. You know, and so much of it is mental, the mental side of it. But yet, Mental observation and mental discipline are two things you don't hear a lot from instructors. But if you're holding a golf club and you don't know what you're doing with it, how are you ever going to be getting right. good at it? Yeah. So it's not your mental awareness is is key to learning, and that's what we're, people are trying to do. They don't need lessons; they need discussions. So that, number one, they get to understand what they're supposed to do. They know why they're supposed to do it that way. And then they just mentally observe themselves doing it that way. So then it becomes a habit. Right. And that's ultimately what you want. Your golf swing to be a habit. So you just pick it up and you swing. You swing pretty much the same all Muscle the time. memory. Yeah. Now, it, it's debatable whether or not there is such things as muscle memory. The muscles, I don't think, can remember. But the brain can. Right. So if it's always when you go out to play and you take your golf club, you've you got a, a plan in your mind. This is what I'm trying to feel. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. But you've got to be aware when you're done, you've got to be aware, I did it. Yeah. Because like most people, they'll hit the best shot in, they've ever hit, and they say, well, how the heck did I do that? Yeah, but that's the reason why they go out again. The whole round yeah. may be crap, but they hit yeah. that one shot they can tell everybody oh, yeah. about, and that'll be good oh, enough yeah. to get them to go back out again. Oh, that's yeah. all it is. All you take is one shot. And if your awareness is good while you're learning it, your mental observation, your mental awareness is good, you'll hit more than one, and then you start hitting a lot more. Right. You know, but not every one is going to be perfect, but it's that time when you miss hit it that you, the brain starts to get involved. Then you say, well, what did I do wrong? And then you go through that mental checklist. Well, my arm was straight. Did I have my feet too far yeah. apart? Did my knees bend too much? Was I too far? Was I too close? Was the ball too far forward, too far back? Now, all of a sudden, you might as well pack it in. Right, because you now you're right. overthinking. It's over. Go back to the clubhouse. Yep. You know, that's it's it. all done. Yeah. yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> As Dick Wallace likes to say, I've graduated <laughs> the, yoga, the Yoda class.